Dating uh, you while I'm filming yeah. a reality show every like I, every day it's I had intense. like four storylines. I everyone had to keep had him a up comment. with. He was like so nice to everyone. He leaves and then someone was like, "Yeah, he didn't hang out with the group enough. He was there for two days." And I know it's like a storyline they're doing, but I know that they're gonna edit it like he's so, not like he's an asshole. with people. Especially yeah. oh my when god, when he's literally doing a like favor the for the show. Person. What the f- is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite, favorite, favorite sisters, Fia and Sistine. Oh, you know when your nail polish is just completely it off? I know. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It brings your number down a notch. Yeah. Easily. It's not cute. It's, it's not, not cute. a good look. You just look dirty. Well, you know what? I feel like I'm the only person left that doesn't do gels. I use regular polish. And I forget every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, why don't I just continue to use regular polish? I don't need gel. It chips in two seconds. Well, that's why you just gotta... It's risk having fucked up nails forever, as long as they look good. And you know what's interesting about wearing nail polish? People don't actually notice it until you have... Good. A fresh set of claws yeah, on. Guys really do care about clean nails. They're I mean, like white, white nails. It's white toes and white nails is like a thing that they love. But Ooh. yeah, I mean, at least one thing I have seen is my nails are getting a lot healthier and stronger without doing gels a ton. All right, good which for is you. Good. So yeah. I don't need to put like fake nails on, which is yeah, that's what I do. And honestly, if I were to remove them right now, I think they would look like saran wrap. Under there. That's how it, thin they are. They were like that for me when I first took them off. And obviously, this is an interesting but story. Hey, I, I don't, don't care. About nails. <laughs> I don't care. They look good. Um, Sophie and I are a little bit delusional, as you could tell from our intro right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just got back to LA. We mm-hmm. were in New York. It was a very spontaneous last minute trip. You know, last time we were there shooting the podcast, I vowed to myself I would never come back. And there I found myself two weeks later. That was, it was not hard to convince her to go. It, yeah. You know what? Every time I go to the city, I have this expectation that I'm going to have the greatest time. I have this whole bucket list of things I want to do. I actually made a checklist of everything that I wanted to hit in New York. I wanted Mm -hmm. to do something really cheesy touristy. I wanted to go to Central Park Zoo, eat a street hot dog, do all this kind of stuff, go to a museum. I didn't tick one thing off my list. Hmm. And that's the problem with New York. You just end up walking way too much, and then you're pooped by the time you get to dinner. Yeah, you really don't realize you've walked 15,000 steps within the hour, and then you just don't want to move. I mean, at least, you know, at least you don't have to work out. That, yeah, that's true. I feel like I'm almost compensating for the pasta I eat every single night. Yeah. But I definitely, you know, (laughs) is it true when you go on vacation that just calories don't count? I feel like I'm like, I, I go on these trips to New York or wherever it is, and I just, no, normally my routine is like, I'll eat very healthy mm-hmm. one in LA. And then I go, I'm like, no, you know what? Like, I could totally have an Egg McMuffin for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Live your life. Live my life. You know what? We're so hard on ourselves <laughs> when we're in LA in terms of, it's not we restrict, it's just we like to eat really clean and healthy. Yeah. For what? Nothing. We have nothing coming up. I don't know why we yeah, I'm torture not like ourselves. Yeah, Sports Illustrated or anything. That would be nice. Thank you. Can reach out to Let us. Let us know. Call you can do a sister duo. You know, we did submit, but. Wait, did we submit? No response yet, but looking optimistic for next year. Uh, and by the time we get to, you know, New York or we're traveling, like you said, it's like we look at dessert as if we've never tasted sugar before. Yeah. And we inhale it. We don't eat it like really cute. Oh, I'm good after two bites. We're like, can I have yours? No, really. Even my boyfriend would say like, he's like, I just love that you just, you eat. And I'm like, like you just have a, <laughs> like, you don't just like hold back on meals. I'm like, I know, because I don't have, I have absolutely no restraint when it comes to food. I'm one of those people I actually can't have. Some people can relate to this. If there's a carton of ice cream in my apartment, I'm not that person that can just have like one bite and wait two days. No, it's half a carton. Yeah, I mean, and look, indulge, do whatever you want. If you want that ice cream, go at it. But for me, I genuinely cannot withhold myself from eating all the desserts in my apartment. Well, see, I have a really bad habit if... If I have a plate of food and I have at least like four bites left and I'm stuffed, like I can't eat anymore. I don't know if it's my OCD. I'm like, I just have, have to, to finish, finish it. Like, I, and then I'm really feeling sick after. I'm like, I didn't have to. I was satisfied right I there. Know. But I just, yeah. Anyway, the food was great. The food was great. But you know what we realize? And every single time we travel, we make the same comment is that just, just this alone, people at the airport, do they just become... 
I no. I, 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 it's there's like something, everyone forgets how to do things when they're in the airport. There's something called, I believe, airport brain. Yeah. And everyone just loses one. Loses a brain. <laughs> loses a brain yeah. when they enter those terminal The cells doors. are gone. The brain cells just disappear. And it's, for one thing, can I just say, wear socks. Wear socks. You know you're going to go through TSA. Don't walk on barefoot bare on the I ground. You know I actually have a bone to pick with TSA. I appreciate the work you guys do, you know, keeping us all safe. But why do I always go off? I'm always getting a pat down. I walked in on the way to New York through the little body scanner. I'm wearing a hoodie and a tank top. I'm not wearing an underwire bra because us ladies know that sometimes that'll set it off. Not wearing jewelry. I'm wearing sweats, a tank top, and socks. Now tell me how my bosom area is always going off. Beep, 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 beep. Every I'm time. serious. Every I don't time. have any jewelry over Every there. Time. I'm really confused. And they're like, oh, this lady has to pot you down. So then I'm getting groped at 8.30 in the morning at LAX. Yeah. No, you mean, human touch isn't a bad thing. I'm not complaining. But you know, at 8.30, by a lady with some gloves on, not loving it. Not the touch you want. You're not, like, I, no. I like physical touch for five languages, just not from TSA. I actually did that Respect. one time. And drank before a flight and went to the hotel, not the hotel, the airport bar, when I felt really fancy. I don't know why. You feel, do you feel I like... I felt sophisticated. Like, I can like, handle my it's liquor. It's like bringing a book to a restaurant and eating a lot. It's just kind of like, am yeah. I like I am the main character. Am I going to have this, like, little meet cute? Am I the airport alone bar? having a mojito maybe at that's, the bar? Yeah. Maybe that's a way to meet people, but the people also have airport brain. So then that's true. Someone said, actually, I saw this on TikTok. This woman was like, Do you want to meet eligible men that have money? You must buy a ticket. You don't need to go on the plane and go to the Delta Lounge or the American Airlines yeah, Lounge, like where it's like the first class lounge, right? And then you just sit at the bar there Can I say? and just wait. And then she goes, You'll meet the greatest She's type of guy. basically asking people to spend $2,000 on a first class ticket just to sit in an airport lounge. Now, see, I'm not sitting in the, the lounge, I'm sitting in like the general public area. And yeah. let me tell you, those, those chaps are interesting. Yeah. Those are some interesting I dudes. Feel like over I, there. Do you feel like you're stared at? When you're walking through the airport, sometimes like people are just like evaluating you. No, but I feel like I'm walking through a high school hallway. Sometimes at the Sophia, airport. I think that we walk around and we're like, "Are you looking at me?" Like we actually <laughs> think people are saying they're like, "No, we're looking through you." Actually, yeah, they're probably. I think they're just looking at us because they don't know what else to look at. No, I think that's our main character complex, thinking that everyone's looking Is at us. Is that my ego? Yes, <laughs> and no one's looking at us. All right, so no one's looking at me. I'm just delusional. I want to talk about. Um, the wonderful birthday pl- present you had planned for me. Okay, um, okay, okay. So we talked about this last week, and I was so excited because, oh, there goes my dress. Um, I had planned for Sistine earlier because her birthday um, came around later on, but I wanted to book her Pretty Woman because we love musicals and yes. we love she loves the movie. And I was stoked. I'm like, this was on Broadway. They're bringing it to L.A., why not? Let's go to a fun restaurant and then go to the play. Yeah. The reservation was cool. Yeah. The views were awesome. The food was good. And then we hopped over to the place. Um, it was at the Dolby Theater yeah. on Hollywood Boulevard. For one thing, we were the most stressed up. I thought it was, I thought you were supposed to dress Does up no for dress plays. with plays. Sophia and I were like, <laughs> we're going called? to the theater. The Let's theater. put on a long that- dress and heels. And everyone was in like crop khakis. tops and like khakis. Yeah, yeah like I socks was, and sandals. God damn it. I know. Come on, guys. Put on a suit. Hey, go to the theater. Maybe people do that in New York, but in LA, it's on Hollywood Boulevard. There's Iron Man, and then fuck. there's Jack Sparrow next to you. No one's dressing up. So we sit down, and we're so excited. But we're the first people, by the way, sitting. There's no one there. We and we the have blasted people. cold air on the back of our necks. We're sitting right under the air vent, and it was yeah. at least 50 degrees. I have never in my entire life Hated a play more. And I just want to just say this really quick so that people don't come at me. I give total credit to the actors and the production. I know how hard it is to put on a musical. And the writing and everything, the music, it's hard. I'm not, I'm not belittling that. I'm just saying the way you guys made the film look as a musical. So scene, you cannot go, Whoo. is it true? It's true. Let me give you my POV. We're sitting there. The curtain raises. We are like, ooh, here we go. It's showtime, you know? The first number starts. 
And I'm biting my bottom lip because I'm like, surely it must get better from here. (laughs) And this can't be the whole, you know, attitude theme of the film. Which, by the way, it's true. They completely changed everything. The story of Pretty Woman, which is sad because it's one of my favorite films. And I look over at Sophia, I give her a side eye. Again, like she had planned this whole night for me. I didn't want to seem ungrateful, but I was like, it's pretty fucking bad. It's pretty bad. And I look at her and she gives me this dead eye and she's like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. (laughs) I was like, we gotta go. We gotta go. After the third song, I realized, and also, look, the actors were great, but you guys casted that fully wrong. I would say I would say the guy that played the um, hotel manager was awesome. He the bellhop. Such, the bellhop Loved was great. Him. Like all of them were awesome. Just the leads. There was no connection between the two I know, key I main characters. Them, you know, she's playing a prostitute. He's a, a wealthy businessman. They looked like they wouldn't touch each other with the ten foot pole. It, but it wasn't. And the the guy that was supposed to play Richard Gere wasn't like this brooding kind of sexy quiet Ooh. guy. But he was just like more. I don't know. It was. It just wasn't as. It wasn't the same. And the music wasn't that good. They everyone did an amazing job performance wise in terms of like executing it. Just wasn't it, but our it cup just of tea. wasn't our cup of tea. Maybe yeah. you loved it, and maybe we're totally wrong. So we. But I was. I said we we're did leaving. Sprint out of there when it intermission. Was- Intermission. We yeah. counted down how many more songs there were. Until I'm actually shocked you said intermission because you kept calling it halftime. I, I, it was the Super I couldn't Bowl. even think. I was so annoyed. Yeah. I was so frustrated because so I was so excited. We get out of there and we call an Uber and we're like, all right, Sophia, this is a good attempt. We're going to call it a night. All of a sudden, we see Iron Man, Iron Man on the street. And he yep. was like, oh, hello, ladies. And we were like, hello, Iron Man. Wow. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Right? He has these like, little lights on his face. And we're, we're trying to walk past him. He's standing literally right in front of the Uber. And these four kids come up to him no, and start it. No, no. First, they come up to me and these four Gen Zers. And they had these like long, shaggy hair. They're like, hey, you want to be on our TikTok? And I was like, absolutely not. They go to the Iron Man. Yeah. And they kind of start messing with him. They, they're touching his suit. And then it got a little bit more aggressive. They started pushing him and punching his suit. And the guy was like, hey, hey, guys, stop, stop doing that. And the kids kept doing it. They're like, oh, you don't like that Iron Man? And so- just kept egging him on. So the guy <laughs> lifts up his face masks and looks directly in the kids. He goes, you're going to have a problem? And like, they were going to fight. They were sizing each other up. I'm like, Iron Man all, against these four TikTokers. You're not going to win. Iron Man is obviously going to win. Yeah. But this guy was pissed. And all of this was happening in front of our car. They were essentially blocking it. Like, we could not we get into, into our car. car. Like, and I was like, you know what? That was the cherry on top of this excellent birthday. And gift. I got in the so car. Thank you. And I looked at Sistine. I said, happy birthday. Mazel. Mazel. That was, speaking of TikTok, I am so in love with this trend that's coming around. And I feel like Sistine and I just are obsessed with these type of trends. I love trends. It's, he's a 10 butt. So if you don't know what the premise is, is basically, and guys do it too. So I'm not just saying, oh, it's only guys and girls. But you basically rank a guy. You say, oh, he's a 10 out of 10. Like, he's perfect, but he has bad breath. And so what is his ranking now? So you'd say, oh, it's a two because bad breath sucks. So we wanted to do a little bit of it. Why don't you start us off? Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. Um, he's an eight, mm. but he constantly talks about how awesome his frat college and frat life was. Like, my time at Princeton was just so good. I would say seven. It's not a deal breaker. Could it get repetitive? Yeah. But he was proud of it. You know, he like he went to college and he has a lot of memories. Look, you spend four years of your young adult life there. That's a lot, you know. Okay, that's I thought you were gonna say lower. I know. No. Um all right. We'll say he's an he's a nine, but has no idea how to dress. <laughs> like what does he wear? Just like, Just like ugly, horrible outfits. Stuff that he maybe like he's a, a he's a nine uh, maybe like a sheer yeah. top. I don't know. He's a six. I care about I care about it. I care so, about it. That would go way. By the way, because if that. he had good style and he was a six, I'd say he's an eight. All because right, I got another one. I think that's like traffic. he's a ten, but has really dirty fingernails. Seven. Ooh. Okay, he's a six point five, but you're sitting next to him on a flight. Oh, an eight point five. <laughs> yeah. So okay, hot. I got one. He's a four, but he's in the NFL. He's easily straight up an eight. Yeah. Sorry. No. <laughs> okay. Um, he's a uh, he's a three. Mm-hmm. But his favorite movie is Ratatouille. 
11. <laughs> so you know, love. this is my red flag. He's a 10, but his favorite movie is Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, and what do we always say? That's a zero, bro. That's a zero. That's a zero. No, I just love those times, but people have been going off on them, and they do it with girls, yeah. too, and it's just so Gabby, good. Gabby, do you have one? He's a seven, but he's your ex-boyfriend. He's a seven, but he's your ex-boyfriend. This is going to be really... <laughs> that is... I'm going to say he's a nine. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> no, the... No. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, he's... He's a nine, but he calls his mom every day. It's very subjective a to ten. each person. Okay. Sweet. He's a six, but he has no interest in you. He's a six, but has no interest in you. Oh, but that's a ten for me because I can't. That's like I, a. It's but you get shy. If someone doesn't yeah. answer me, I always go. How about you love me? Come on. He's a nine, but has almost too much interest in you. He's a four. <laughs> no, he's a nine. <laughs> no, you would never go. If, if, funny, if a nine was showing interest in me. Uh, he stays a nine, a ten. No, because too one much though, to the point where like, why does he show this much uh, attention to me? Eight, maybe. I still like the attention. Should, I can we for, take... should we do one for girls? Oh, yeah, for girls. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> She's a seven, but she still has, like, 2014 ombre. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, really orange. <laughs> She's a nine, but she was the president of her sorority. Ooh, Ooh. that's a four. They're crazy. Oh, I have friends that are presents. You're a 10. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> I have to cut that. <laughs> She's an eight, but she's a hot Cheeto girl. I don't even know what that means. Like, is it's always thing? eating, like, hot Cheetos, and it's all over her hands. That's still an eight. Oh, all over her hands. Yeah, like, gross. Is that just, like, her personality? She just walks around with hot Cheeto hands? Oh, never mind. You guys don't get it. Scarlett would get it if she was here. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Thank <laughs> you. God. Okay, okay. All right, whatever. The last two you said make them ten. Ten. Oh. Ten. <laughs> ten. <laughs> You're a, you like a hot <laughs> Cheeto girl? Yeah. Whoa. I gotta buy some hot Cheetos. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, how about this? He's... A five, but he is um, subscribed to the Unwax podcast. Oh, he's a friggin' 15 out of 10. That's a 10. Wait, how That's is a 10. She's a, a nine. Okay. But she drunk calls and cries every time she gets drunk. Oh, like a three. I don't care. Uh, no, that's bad. That's, that's bad. annoying. See, that's actually a thing. Like, they hate that. Yeah. Or else she's a, an eight, but she purposely never answers texts or calls and she Oh, that's annoying. Makes that's that our personalities. I never two. answer. How about he's a nine, but he sleeps with socks on? Is that weird? I don't mind socks. Like a seven. Oh, a seven? Okay. Okay, never mind. I sleep with my socks on. He's, he's a nine, but you thought... <laughs> wait, he's a nine. <laughs> I don't know. I thought you guys were going to be like, that's hot. people think about it. Never mind. He's a nine, but he has self-tanner. Oh, uh, 10, so we can do it together. What do you mean? Gets I love a man that does self-care. Yeah, we do each other's backs. Okay. okay, let's talk about the amazing guest we have on today. I'm actually really excited. I think I want to talk before she gets in the room. I'm a massive fan of hers. And yeah. I've been following her and her work and her comedy and her podcast for a very long time. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say it to her face. I love her. I'm so excited. I think this conversation is going to be hysterical. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Today we have on the funniest person to appear on the Unwax podcast. Starting her young career as a professional tennis player, this multi-talented woman has become a very successful stand-up comedian, frequently performing at New York City's iconic Comedy Cellar. Mm -hmm. She's also a standout on the reality TV show Summer House, love, <laughs> and is the host of not one, but two podcasts. This is the iconic Hannah Burner studio audience. Oh studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> I paid them to say all these things about me. Thank you so much. Of course. No, what an honor. Isn't it kind of cool to listen to yourself? Like how many things you've actually done? You're like, wait, Kind of cool. Yeah, it's weird because you're so in your own head all the time about who yeah. you are, and then to see how other people might view you. A hundred. Yeah. It's kind of like when you think everyone's mad at you, and then someone's like, "Hey, I think you're awesome," and you're like, "Oh, I made that up." Yeah. Yes. No, you think everyone, or you think someone doesn't like you, and the whole time they just have like a resting bitch face, and you're like, "Well, yeah. you know, this person." Or I'm you overthinking think it. you don't do enough, or you haven't done enough, and you're like, "No, no, no, you're doing a lot." <laughs> like, if you oh, just literally you. today, I came from therapy, and I was. We were like trying to talk about is it ego that like I want to do more shit or is it just because I love creating? And Ooh. it's like a thin line. What did you come That's up so with? Well, because I was like, I want to put out a special. But like yes. people are very like, you know, if you wait a little longer, it could potentially be better. But I'm also like, if I waited around 
to do shit in the past. People would have thought I was crazy, like yeah. just starting to do comedy. I was doing an hour very early into my career, which most people would be like, right. that's risky, don't yeah. do that. Right. But I'm like, I'm more of a doer and, and fuck up. 100%. Than yeah. just like be stuck in my own. But I like that you said that because I feel like that's constantly, even for your, I think you too, like we're mm-hmm. always being told like, no, just wait like a year. Oh yeah, just because wait, you're not you ready. Year, you're not work. ready. That's so f- not fucking true. You're fucking right, You're especially re- with creative shit. Yeah. Yes. And also, for women in general, they say that women like to take jobs they're overqualified for, and men take jobs they're underqualified for. Oh, T. And even with, like, dating, I feel like girls take guys they're overqualified yes. for yes. and, like, teach them life. Yes. And then guys get these girls, and I said, ha, 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 no. no. We're swapping. Switchly. We're swapping. I always like dating guys who are hotter than me. I like Why dating not? people who are smarter yeah. than Why me. Why not? Which is hard to find because I'm a genius. Just kidding. And <laughs> no, but it probably is. You want to respect hard their to mind. Up. Yeah. And then I also always go for jobs I sh- should not be hired for. <laughs> no, but that's, I think that's really important also because you're challenging yourself. You want to do better. And you also want to even date people that make you better. We yes. actually had this conversation in New York. And we're like, why do we not even in, like, I'm not saying in our relationships, but like with everything we do, we feel like we have to settle yeah. so that we won't offend anyone or we won't fuck up or we don't think that we're qualified. Like who says you can't put out an yeah. hour special yeah. in the beginning of your career? Yeah. I want to talk about your special, though. <laughs> I, I do. Because how long have you been doing comedy for? So I've been doing comedy. F- I'm considered very green. I've been doing it around three years. But I've been... I started, like, seven years ago working at this company, Betches. Betches. Where I was, like... Ri- I was the seventh hire. I was writing all Stop. their tweets, their memes. Yeah. Like, starting a lot of trends. I also was writing all these, like, quick, funny videos. Like, SNL-type sketches yeah. for, like, millennial girls. Oh, so you've been in comedy so way I, longer. I, yeah. Well, I, and then... I started really honing in on my own voice. Like, yeah. I knew their voice, and I started to get my own voice, which is a little more, like, mm-hmm. dirty and goofy. And mm-hmm. then my, I started my podcast, yeah. and my friend, someone hit me up and was like, do a live podcast show. And my friend was like, I dare you do 10 minutes of stand-up. And I had, like, dated stand-ups, and I had friends who were stand-ups, but do I was you get like, along that's with their thing. Do I love stand-up comedians. I mean, okay. not to yeah. date, but they're... But they're, they're a nightmare to date. I'm, I'm married to one, <laughs> By the way, but I told myself comedians not to. tell me, comedians tell me they're like you don't want to date a comedian because they're dark. Yes, Com- well the thing is, if what kind of people need to make strangers laugh every night to feel whole? Ooh. I'm talking about myself right now, but it's more. It's I actually feel like stand-ups are two types of people. They're mm-hmm. like, they say they're addicts or athletes. Oh. Where like you're, they're oh either God, like searching for this high, yeah. or like I was an athlete. Where like I just. I love the adrenaline. The adrenaline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love performing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but just stand ups are just a, a certain breed of person. They're not as, I don't want to say simple because I don't think anyone's simple. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But we right. deal with like anxiety, depression, OCD. Yeah, totally. yeah. Well, so does everybody else. I mean, you guys just wear it on your sleeve. That's just I, yeah. the difference. Yeah. And I also think maybe stand ups are so dark because like, I love making people laugh more yeah. than anything because I know what it's like to be so sad. Right. And if you've never, you know how like I you feel don't like you're going into it with the best intention though. Well, it, yeah. You know, um, it all started just because I like making my friends laugh. Right. Yeah. And my family's really funny. And I just humor is like the yeah. one thing that I always had. Yeah. yeah. Where like life <laughs> punches you in the face yeah. sometimes, mm-hmm. but laughter can always be like found in any scenario. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> so that's that's actually. actually I am vulnerable as shit right now. I just came from therapy. Like, I'm an open wound. What do you guys want? <laughs> so, wait, did you mention it all? <laughs> mention it all. Do you want to get to this point? So, did you realize when you did that 10 minute uh, podcast live thing that you were like, oh, wait, I could actually do stand up? So, I, for all the girlies out there who were trying to do stuff by the book, I didn't know that, like, comedians actually, you start with like two minutes and you do open mics. Yeah. And you do open mics for like two to three years. That's oh what they God. recommend. Oh God. And then you start getting heat and then you get passed at some clubs and stuff. Uh-huh. The first time I did comedy was at Caroline's in front of 300 people and I just did 10 minutes. Because I didn't oh, know. What? I didn't, I was like dumb confident. Like I didn't know Ignorance that was crazy. That's kind of the best way to be though. Yes, that's and that's smart. what I'm saying. Like whether yeah. in your creative shit, yeah. don't look at, because also we're not like trying to be lawyers where it's like you have to pass this test. Yeah. It's creativity. No. Yeah. And also, if you think about it, because of my tennis 
experience, I am used to dealing with nerve-wracking situations, so I wasn't yeah. nervous. Right. But I do have to say, I went into it like no ego. I was like, if I love it, I'm going to do it more. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if I hate it, it's not my path. Yeah. Did you feel like, okay, if I'm going to bomb, this isn't for me? So I remember right before I went on stage, because with tennis, I dealt with some performance anxiety. Yeah. Like, I felt a lot of pressure from my parents and from, like, I, my, the school I was at, coaches. Mm-hmm. And I would always crack under pressure. <laughs> Like, I really, I really, I, I, I was going like to say the opposite show. for you. I really assumed that you would thrive under pressure. I, I do in certain ways. I'm like a weird risk taker where, like, some things you're like, wow, she's so brave. And yeah. then other things you're like, why couldn't she do that? Yeah. Like, I just deal with a lot of anxiety. It, and it's I'm, situational. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I always put myself out there. I'll always put myself out yeah, there, mm-hmm. but I'll either crash and burn yeah. or be great. Oh, but I'd, yeah, I get that. But I'll put myself, I won't quit. You know, yeah, so I I'll like quit. That. She's a doer. Yeah. So I basically remember thinking, oh my God, this could be like tennis, and I'm going to go on stage and I'm going to blank out. Right. Yeah. I'm going to oh like God. feel out of my body. I'm sweating already. I'm going to like, hard. <laughs> I swear to God, I go on stage and I start talking and I feel like I'm at brunch with my best friend. <gasps> And I'm telling you, oh, it shook me to the core because wow, I've done a lot of things that, like, I'm good at. Yeah. Like, I do, like, cold calling sales. I, I, right, I've right, done right. tennis. And I was good at it because I'm a hard worker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I always felt sick inside. And I just thought oh that's what God. athletes do. Like, you're good at being uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's what makes you great. But I didn't realize you could do something that didn't make you sick all the time. Whoa. But it was... It, you kind of found your calling in a way. It was like I need, I, I need yeah. to be here. Like I'm good at this. Yeah, and in my head, there were. I was like, that's what my ex did. Like I don't want him to think I'm copying him. And then I was like, also like this is this male dominated field. And yeah, it's, it's difficult. But then I was like, oh no, you're crazy. And yeah. this is where your crazy is in its most like beautiful form. Exactly. And. You also, being a comedian is just, like, complaining and making people think differently about things. 100%. And making people feel less alone. You know what's also fun is, like, our family, I feel like we have very, we're going to talk about families because we have yeah. an Italian family, too, and so everyone's very loud. Oh, and so, good, yeah. I was just, <laughs> no, like this, totally Italian. That's why I asked her phone because I'm like, you come off like New Yorkers. No, yeah, or we're, like, we're, East Coast. that is, like, the best compliment. <laughs> Thanks. I don't want to be no, associated you're not with the West Coast. No, no, we're definitely not very, honestly, like, people don't. When they say we're from LA, they're like, "Really? Like you're born and raised here?" I'm like, "Yeah." But it's we're nice. the thing, it would, my point. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you are more friendly. <laughs> if you've been in New York, would you would have been a little? You would have had a couple more wrinkles on your face. I for agree. sure. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have to be Botox. Like you've seen some shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but we love shit. the shock factor. Like yeah. I, that's how we are. Like mm-hmm. we're one of those people that if we're sitting with all our girlfriends, we'll for sure say the most raunchy aggressive shit that has yeah. absolutely no necessary reason to be there. Yeah. But we just love getting people's reactions. I think that's like... <laughs> I right? love getting people's reactions. Yeah. And I was about to say, you guys are really good interviewers. Oh, what? You, no, you are. Because you, you make people feel comfortable oh. and you're very, like, you're good listeners too. Thanks. And that's like part of making good interviewers is like getting reactions out of people. Yeah. People want to see reactions. That's yeah. such a compliment. I literally get Thank off you. on like making like men uncomfortable in interviews. No. Oh, I, I like making gr- like people feel confident. No. I like yeah. to get people to you feel alive. Well, you know I what it is? I this agree. is what I always say. It's like when I'm getting to know a girlfriend or I'm dating a guy, whatever it is, y'all are all thinking about the same things I'm thinking about. I'm the only one that's going to say it first. That's and true. then once I kind of like out myself a little bit, yeah. then they go, oh, wait, yeah, I do the same thing or whatever it is. Well, and that's so the ultimate that's test the of point. compatibility. If you guys, if I, we enjoy making a date very uncomfortable yeah. Ooh, I love early it. on. Just early, to see how they'll on. react. And if they can't catch on to our humor or aren't able to banter off of us, we're like, you don't got Wait, it. That's why people are laughing that's at very your New York at because, you, of you. Really? New <laughs> York is like the way I show affection is making fun of you. And if yeah. I like you, if, if yeah. I'm nice to you, that means I don't like you. Like if I'm like super polite and trying to get out of the conversation, oh, that it's is like I hate you. Such but if I like look at you and I start like shitting on something about uh, your life, for sure. you're like, oh my God, Hannah's obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like school yard shit. It's my my <laughs> best friend and I, we call it like gentle bullying. We just gentle bully each yeah. other. Oh yeah. The yeah. whole yeah. fucking day. That's and love. once, every now and then like we'll hug and we feel so weird. But that's my own intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> what do, do I like, like hugging you? Like stepbrothers like. <laughs> I, I come and hug her and she literally's like, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> I get shriveled. I was like, God damn it. I was just trying to show like one ounce of yeah, affection that we never show. My love for you. But that yeah. is a good test in relationships yeah. where like make fun of him 
And if he can't spit it back at you, he's done. Yeah. Like, we're bored immediately. I don't That's care how true. tall or hot yeah. or rich the dude is. If I make fun of him and he can't spit it back, I'm like, we yawn, fest. Thank I agree. You. Honestly, there's nothing worse than a boring person. My dad always says that the worst thing you can be is a boring yeah, person. Yeah, that's the worst thing a person Wait, can that be. Wait, I need to start boring. telling myself that because that's like the one thing I'll never fail at. Like, yeah. I'll fail at everything mm-hmm. else, but boring is never. I'm never. Not, well, even but if I have here's a quiet the thing, moment, like, I'll fall over. A lot of people don't have it. A lot of You were just naturally a funny person and you're naturally not a boring person, but... Sometimes I think we assume that everyone is the same and they're not. And you're like, yeah. what is wrong with you? Or maybe you? like within their family, they're not boring. Like yeah. they have inside jokes. Yeah. But when you combine different cultures, people are like, what's going on? I do oh, think yeah. like growing up in the family that we grew up in and what I've seen from your family on TV <laughs> and social media, it's like they are a huge testament to the way that we are today. Being yeah. loud and yeah. open. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can relate. An Italian family, it's like, you don't talk, you scream talk. A scream. <laughs> like, you can't tell if they're fighting or laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And but it's like, yeah. anytime we bring our friends over or guys home, whatever it is, they don't want to leave. They get stressed because they're like, we can't fucking like keep up. Get a word in. Like, they're scared. Get a word they leave in. and they come back. They're like, wait, that was like actually really fun because they go back to their friends and no one's saying anything. So like the no, adrenaline yeah, goes yeah. off. Yeah. No, like, oh, like, we're drug trip. No, I want more. It's, I know, no, so, it's then we're like, crazy. Why are you not talking? Like, yeah. Someone's screaming. Someone's throwing like a meatball. Like it's actually insane. What's yeah. the most like Italian thing that you think you do that you got from your family today? I mean, food is like love for me, mm-hmm. and I really care about sitting down and eating a meal with someone. Yeah. Love that's that. like my like love language where mm-hmm. like even friends, like you'll hit me up like, you want to do this, you want to do this. But if you're like, do you want to get dinner. lunch yeah. um, with dinner? I'm there. Yeah. And <laughs> I have a very classic Italian grandma. She's actually on Instagram. Nana no. still got it. No, she's, she's 80 years old. She's stop. gorgeous. Fucking fabulous. Stop. She's fa- You've seen her? Yes. Oh my God. Wait, I'm going to tell her that you guys know who she is. She's going <laughs> to. No, I saw her on <laughs> Summer House and she made this like, Sex, she's like, I'm a sex kitten, or like made a comment like that. And she's wearing a choker, and I think I have the same choker. <laughs> this <laughs> and died. She's literally from Brooklyn, New York. She got married at 18. She wanted to be an artist, told her dad, I want to go to art school. Yeah. And he cried because he was like, You need to get married. No. So she literally just like got married to my amazing papa. Yeah. But she is always glamorous. Yeah. She's so I, she always it. shows her decolletage, she yeah. calls it. Decolletage. And she oh, she I always has a meal, but she's so classic Italian grandma where like we're all eating, she's standing. Yeah. And then she already ate while eating, kind of. So she's just like, are you, are you going to finish that? Do you want more? You don't want another sausage? You don't want Stop. another one? And you're like, Nana, I'm full. And she's like, you don't like the sausage? Oh, my God. You don't like so the good. chicken parmesan? No. You're so good. <laughs> and then you're so like, good. okay. But like, and then next thing you know, but she's looking hot and gorgeous. And yeah. we're just like stuffing our faces. Yeah. But like, that's the love is like her force feeding me. Right. <laughs> Have you ever brought it? Uh, okay. So obviously your husband's been met, met your family. But when you yeah. bring home a date or whoever you're seeing, do you, if your family doesn't like them, do they tell you immediately? Or how is that? So if my mom does not like a dude, he's done. I've, Same. I've, That's I've what we broken say. Same. up with men. Because mm-hmm. my mom, I, she's one of those people that just like knows everything. And yeah. I could try to be like, That's uh, us. That's she, us. I trust yeah. her with my life. Yeah. I will call her about the littlest things, like what color nails should I get to? Should I leave my job or something? And she, I could try my own thing, but she's right. Yeah, she, and she has the and best interest for me. So and true. she's lived life. Yeah. Was I a little codependent on her for a while? I think I was, but I just had yeah. to trust my own gut, which is the same as hers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But once I was dating a guy, and you know it's a red flag when you omit stories from your mom. Uh, okay. You know, because yeah. like you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, mm, she's do. not gonna like that. I do. And then, I do. Ex- but you, she likes what you've told her. And one day, I was like having all this anxiety oh about this relationship, and this guy was like. To everyone else, everyone loved him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, like, wanted to be in love with him, but, like, something was wrong. And I finally just tell her. I'm like, I don't feel good when I'm around him. I feel like he doesn't want to hang out with me all the time. He doesn't laugh at my jokes. I said, like, all this stuff. And she was like, you're not going to this place tonight. And I was like, what? And she's like, pick up the phone. You're breaking up with him right now. Stop. <gasps> did and you? I did it. I did it. <gasps> but to be honest, if I didn't do that, it would have been, like, six more months of, like, That's bullshit. Wait, I was yeah. having panic attacks and stuff because I was, like, feeling... Off. The guy, like, yeah. wasn't good for my self-esteem. But hey, I, like, Wait, what was it about him that was off? It seemed like for face value, it was perfect. He's perfect, yeah. What was perfect about him? I basically... Was- I think you guys probably deal with it a lot in this industry. Mm-hmm. Like, he was a... Um, perf- he was, like, a performer mm-hmm. and, right. and stuff. And I really looked up to him. And then I realized, like, he was kind of dimming my light. Yeah. Mm. And I literally watched a, a Dr. Dre documentary where oh. his wife... I know, very random. <laughs> so funny. But his wife was, like... 
I'm his rock and he's the balloon and I hold him down. I remember watching that in that moment. Oh, like, I'm not yeah. a rock. No. I'm nobody's rock. Like yeah. I'm, I, we should be switching, balance. I agree. And then I remember being like, also, Dr. Jane her did get divorced or something. Oh, so, <laughs> see? see? So now yeah. she's just a rock at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> hopefully she's making herself a balloon. But I feel like gardeners and flowers are in relationships and you mm-hmm. should go back and forth. Yeah. Totally. And yeah. I think he wanted me to kind of be just like his like, Support system. I hate when guys are like, you check everything off my list. I think that's a red flag if he yeah, says that to you. Yeah. It's like you're this like thing they're just trying to fill in where it's like, no, like I'm that my he own came unique up with in his mind. Yeah. 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 And then I didn't think he was like deep down rooting for me. Ooh. And I feel like he had his own shit that he wasn't like he was – he wanted to be really cool. Yeah. And as a result, it was making me not feel good about myself. I think it comes out in anxiety. Like you start getting panic attacks. Like, yeah. Where is this coming from? Even when it's on the most random day, you're like, wait, I'm repressing everything that's going but on. But I feel in like when my I life, hear my relationship, and now it's just coming out of like me doing my nails. But when I hear, <laughs> no, I fucking chip my polish. <laughs> 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 it's not the polish. It's but the when point. I hear, when I hear guys like this, and I've dated guys like that, where I'm like. I feel like I do everything right and I'm fun and I'm a great time. Yeah. Why do why do they make me feel this way? You're such a personality and you have so much comedy and like you, you make him feel good and happy all the time, but he in his mind probably can't keep up with you and he knows that. And he's like, Well, I can't make her laugh as much as she makes me laugh. I can't I'm not as ambitious, I'm not as creative. So they have to put you down. Like no one throws Yeah. Like I always say, like people throw stones up. They don't throw stones down. It's true. And also like even the scorekeeping. Like, that should not happen in relationships. Yes. It's like we're on a team together. Yeah. Once you feel like they're, like, counting how many times, like, you helped out or something. or uh, it's such a yeah. like marriage. Oh, my God. Sophia and I do that. Like, I edited this week's yeah. episode. So well, you guys are fine. You're yeah, stuck yeah. together. We, we always do this. But you know things aren't great when you feel like people are counting and, like, yeah. testing. And that shit's fucked up. How did you know then— Des was different from all the other ones. Did your yeah, mom like? Oh Des. my god, I would love to talk about Des. Oh, oh do we god. love his daddy? Oh, do we love his daddy moment? Our, our thing says, "How does it feel dating a little guy?" Like, we oh, love okay. it. No, he's Please. literally a silver fox. Oh my, and I'm I'm not that girl who like has always been into older guys. Yeah, like, oldest guy I dated was like 36. I always. I also, I think I was a little emotionally unavailable where I would like to go for, like, really hot dudes. Uh, <laughs> why like, not? I, why I, not? I, it was fun, but I almost like in a feminist way where I was like, yeah, I want to be like, I'm successful and I have all these hot guys that I, I'm but hanging out with. Because why you're not, like, though? because by me, because it's like, the reverse. What's the um, difference? It's, a guy it's kind does of like, it. yeah. kind of baller to kind and of And also, I wasn't yeah. trying to get married in my early 20s, so right. I was like... I went for guys that I didn't, like, respect 100% because if they were to reject me, I'd be like, well, I wasn't even into him. In front of, oh, oh, you're so, protecting your so I, But I'd go after yeah. emotion available guys. I feel like I kind of would do the same thing. 100%. Or I'd go with yeah. guys who, like, I just had, like, too much control. And then you'd flip yeah. to a guy you have no control. And then you break <laughs> down because you're like, why can't I control this person? Yeah. And, and, like, not that we're trying to be controlling cunts, but, like, sorry, that's... No, it's... In we England, love that word. In England, they say... We it. always say, see you next Tuesday, so it's okay. Okay, see you next Tuesday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of syllables, but you got what I said. It, you, then you swing back to being like, okay, I want... I want to feel safe in a relationship mm-hmm. and then you feel too safe that you're bored and then you go to the other end where you feel scared and yeah. insecure and then it's like meh, meh, meh. so and you're I, telling us I there's wanna, a balance right I, yes okay good there <laughs> needs to be a tug and pull like because if it gets too comfortable it is boring i'm sorry yeah. like there's going to be no change and that's when you if start to fight for no reason and then if it's yeah. uncomfortable you just constantly don't feel enough yeah. and then you're always like Can I, trying I, to fight I for hold someone. stuff in I, so oh, i'll just yeah. be like mm-hmm. I'm really mm-hmm. And then one day I'm like, I can't do this. And he's like, what? <laughs> That's me. Over nothing. I literally was so stressed. Over I like, like, I like, I once I got sushi with him and he like asked about stuff on the menu. And I'm like, it's a Japanese place. They have the same stuff on every menu everywhere. And then I was like, I'm done with him. <laughs> I'm over. It was three year relationship. I was like, this is it. Oh, That's the last this question. Sushi? F you for this question. Like, that's not happening. What is the age difference between you and Des? It's 15 years. Love mm-hmm. that. I'm 30. Actually, right now he's 46, so 16. I had seen him do comedy like six years ago yeah. at the Comedy Cellar, and he went up, and he was just like great energy. It's funny. Yeah. I'm from Brooklyn. He's originally from Queens. I feel like you yeah. do end up with someone that feels like home to you. For sure. Oh, yeah. Even though we've all traveled. like So he lived in Ireland from the age of 14 on. Oh, my God. 
because he he basically got sent to boarding school there, and he has family mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So he he has this like interesting life. He also speaks Mandarin. Like, basically, he's like fucking interesting. Wait, that's like very you're talking to someone, and, and you're, you're gonna like, constantly learn from someone like that. And like, I don't want to be with someone who's like, I'm so smart. I'm gonna teach you everything. No, no, no. no but yeah. I was just like, whoa, he knows shit. Where that's like, cool. if I ask him a question, I'm gonna listen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, I care. I, I'm asking because <laughs> I actually want to know. I just I love helping people too. So I'll be in these relationships where I'm just constantly like. What do you want to do with your life? I'll help you Me. get there. Yeah, yep. and yep. like do that with your friends, not your partner. Yeah, yes, yes. I totally exactly. agree. Like your partner, you don't want to feel like you're you're always pulling because eventually, I think they resent it if you're, yeah. you're always like yeah. you don't like where you are now. Yeah, no, it's Can like you, you they don't yeah. you don't want to have to try to better them because you want to be with their best self. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So Des, I saw him do comedy, and he was talking about how he lived in Ireland. And I was like, mm, I guess I'll never hook up with that guy. And then fast forward, I'm in comedy. And he added me on Instagram because we had mutual friends. And he was in Ireland. Like, this is just like the hot yeah. Irish comic. I swear to God, there's. I was 29 single living with my parents in Long Island yeah. with four cats. And my mom even was like, so... Do you think you have to work on something within yourself? And I'm like, Mom, I remember getting annoyed at her. Mm -hmm. And I don't get annoyed at her very often. I was like, I haven't met my person. Who got away? I said, Mom, who got away? Out of all the guys. Who got away? Did she have anybody that she always used to say who got away? She knows no one got away. Okay. She hated it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she didn't hate Same, it. But, like, but she we was, were all like, everything that's not, was... It's not it. Yeah. There was yeah. nothing that I was like, oh, I wish that worked out. No. Yeah. So I was like, I haven't met it. Yeah. And I really think like relationships are like friendships where you ever meet someone and immediately you're like, I'm obsessed with this person. Yeah. yeah. And they feel that way too. And I'm telling you. Yeah. What I wish I knew in my early 20s was a lot of the time you're like, okay, I should have done this. I should have said this. And you're like yeah. forcing all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it was me. And Or, oh, he doesn't know. I have to get him to understand me. Stop. Oh, yeah. Like literally stop and, right. ke- and keep working on your own shit mm-hmm. and your own energy because you're just going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and attract a brighter person. I think people forget. That's that maturity. But I think people forget that That's just is, being old. Yeah. <laughs> That's maturing. <laughs> but you no, realize But that. I love talking to girlies your age Yeah, because it's actually like the most chaotic, scary time and people don't so talk about it. I'm turning 26. She's going to turn 24. 24. Yeah. 26, so 24 are powerful, like beautiful, crazy I, and ages. And I feel like I'm so behind on everything. That's what society makes you think. Because uh, think about it. After college, which, by the way, last year of college, they're like, what major do you want to do? And you're like, I thought it didn't matter. Yeah. And then yeah. It th- does matter. Then you're thrown into life. <laughs> yeah. And you haven't even tried the jobs. My 20s, I had so many different jobs. I dated different guys. Right. And I was, you're literally just researching. Your yeah. 20s are a chaotic, drunk yeah. research phase. Yeah. yeah. It's like you're in just like this lazy I, pool. No, I saw this floating, TikTok. And I figuring said, it out. But I told Sistine this, and, and I said this on our last podcast, was someone said, your 20s are like you being a newborn into adulthood. Yeah. So you're basically nine years old. But then you adulthood. see the social media and like someone at 25 is in like Forbes 30 under 30 oh and they my like God. cured cancer and you're like, oh my God. So I'm I don't a failure. Even, I don't even know what to do. But, but that's, yeah. it's, it's not normal. That is like the zero percent. Like and also point. like some people who have gotten really successful at a young age, it's like that's almost their peak or like they fight the rest of their life to like, like, yeah. well, remember when type yeah. thing? Yeah. Like, even people getting famous really young, then they, like, miss that high right. of, like, when mm-hmm. they were, like, but 15 even, on a Disney show. Yeah. And yeah. then you're, like... Yeah. And no, some of these kids are starting at, like, 15 what they end up getting successful at, at 25. Like, yeah. But then they didn't have Life their- is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. And for uh, the girls in their early 20s, my only thing that I'm pressuring you to do mm-hmm. is to literally... Try everything to understand what brings you joy. Right. Because your only job is when you're in your 30s. And there's a reason why at 25 years old, people quit their job and go on yoga retreats. Like, that's like a thing. Yeah, yeah no, it's 100%. true. You, because you, to go find yourself. You do. I, I yeah. recently did like a, speak, a speaking gig about career moves. And I always say, think of the job that society, your parents, you think you should do. Mm-hmm. And then think of the job that's like crazy that you'd be like embarrassed to tell people what you want to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. That's a job you need That's to start the, going for. So yeah. I should do in your twenties, because then. But what are we doing? Special effects makeup. <laughs> oh my god! That's a makeup. I've like, always. What like, are you That's talking good. about? I've always. I've always. <laughs> That's what I look at. Special effects makeup. You have never <laughs> seen it, Hannah. This is why I don't tell people. Okay, you're shaming her. You're shaming you're her dream. Shaming, you're dimming you're my shaming life. Her, you're kink shaming. <laughs> you're dimming my life. <laughs> this is why I don't tell people. But oh, the thi- but also, if we think about it, you don't even. I also think, like, certain goals are restricting. We're, like, in five years, we don't even know what the technology will be for that kind of makeup. So, like, 
you figuring out today, like, you love the pod, you like modeling. What are little steps you can take to research the industry, mm-hmm. take to hang out with people who do that as well, to start your own channel where maybe yeah. you're fucking around with intense stuff? Like, right. it's the difference between people who are really successful and not successful is literally just the time it takes them to like decide to take action. Yeah. Because people f- <sighs> will freeze for years. That, You're just frozen. I feel like I'm freezing Also, you might right do now. it tomorrow and be like, wait, I'm so I bored. Hate it. I'm bored. It takes forever. Yeah. But at least you know. But you know why? That's what your so 20s is for. True. Not when you're 35, have a family, hate your job, wish you tried special effects. I have a question. I if totally your mom agree. had told you don't do this, do you think it would have been harder for you to jump into like crazier careers? Oh my God, great question. Because People. I feel like I, so, I mean, I, I would say like our, our mom She's super supportive of us, but then of course she's gonna say like, "I don't." Here's know, a realistic sure. goal. It's not realistic, yeah. and that's not because she's doing it to hold us back. She's just trying to make sure that we don't fail at something or whatever it is. Yeah. So and that's fine. That's just what a mom does sometimes. Yeah, she wants to protect you. Exactly. But for me, sometimes I take it like, "Oh, I can't. I shouldn't do it. Like at all." She said no, so I don't do it. Yeah. And that's just like my own anxiety, and I'm frozen. Well, she's also projecting her anxiety onto you, and you probably get that anxiety from yes. her. Yes. <laughs> Because, and it's not that you start realizing that your parents are seeing you through a lens of their own experiences. Yeah. And my mom, for example, like she was the first person, woman to go to college in her family. And then she wanted to be a jazz singer, but she didn't because like her brother was trying to do more creative stuff. And she said she like, she ended up being a teacher and she like went her whole life doing that. So she kind of regretted that she didn't try something crazy. So to me, she's like, bitch, go off. Go I love it. And do now it. she's retired and she's singing jazz. <gasps> oh, which is cool. Good I that is I think I'm just here to be like, life awesome. is so short and your 20s, you're not supposed to be the best at anything. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're a little when I see someone do something great in their 20s, it's like, cool, it's a fucking marathon. Yeah. And <laughs> this is a, a stupid quote, but I like metaphors. No, I love metaphors. We're all like popcorn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where like the temperature will be the same, yeah. but people are going to pop at different times. And that's just science. Yeah. I love that. I like that. I l- actually, Why I was that, that like so that, that deep made sense. for me? <laughs> no, this I'm not a popcorn. I'm a pop kernel. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, you guys are already like putting yourself out there no, but doing is, this podcast. But it's, it's being a creator. I think that you're constantly thinking. You're seeing everyone else doing yeah. creative stuff. And they're like changing avenues all and maybe they've been in it for a little bit longer mm-hmm. like what can I do more how can I be more successful and, yeah. and maybe that's just like our ego or insecurity wanting to just like but keep, it also like it makes also us successful you. and it so motivates it's a thin us. line yeah. the yeah. goal for me is like I want to wake up and be happy at the end of the day and you you have to put yourself in the best situation with the best people around you mm-hmm. to literally just be happy because I don't care how much money you're making it's not going to suffice yeah. if you're 32 and feeling empty yeah, because you hate your job. Because yeah, right? in your 20s, you were doing what everyone, what you thought everyone wanted you to do. And you know what else? And that's when it comes to relationships too. With You were like with you and Des, you're like, I found this guy. We hit it off immediately. And you mm-hmm. didn't realize you can find that immediate spark with you're someone. You're such you a know? good mentor and influence for oh women in their 20s. Yeah, no, seriously. Really? Because I, think, I think it's because I've, I've had to do a lot of work on it. myself. Yeah. And I like... I love talking to you guys because I wish I had someone saying that to me in my early right. 20s because I'm fucking type A and very hard yeah. on myself. But so I, I, yeah. And I feel like, yeah, I, I attract like yeah. other girls who were like that. Yeah. And I just want women to take over the world. I do too. And the gays. Domination. <laughs> but I, I totally agree. Come on. But what, I really, what I really like um, about your relationship is I think Sophia and I put a lot of pressure on ourselves to like find our person by the time we're 27, be engaged by this number, our body clock is running out, have babies by this number. And you popcorn. Like, popcorn. I'm literally exactly. going to send you a DM and be like, popcorn. 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 Just like an emoji. And, like, and, right, you, you're right. and you get, like literally put a popcorn like sticker on the back of your phone it's or something. It's so true. Yeah. But you waited and you found the perfect person at the perfect time for you. It, I hope that it gives, I hate when people are like, it'll work for me. And you're like, okay, well, that's you. Yeah. But also it makes people feel better. I quit. I was doing like marketing. Mm-hmm. I hated my job. I was like, I saw an old video. I used to do some like on screen stuff for Wisconsin athletics when I played tennis there. Like broadcasting? Yeah, like in my last semester. Because no I knew sports and I loved it and yeah. I wanted to be on camera. But then I didn't want to move to like a small city. I just right. went back to New York. Mm-hmm. I had some ideas of doing like a fun YouTube channel and then I got into sales. But I needed that time to show my parents, like, see, I can make money doing corporate bullshit. I don't want to do but it. But I'm not it's happy. happy. And, and it didn't make me happy. I hated myself. And then at 25, I literally quit my job 
and said, all I manifested was I want to do video. That's yeah. all I put into the universe. I want to do video. I didn't know if it was going to be sports. So I took an unpaid internship doing a sports video editing thing, which I wasn't even editing. I was like sending them yeah. data. And I always say, tell people your dreams. Like I, that was really powerful when oh. you finally said out loud. Because you know when you keep something as a secret, it yeah. almost feels naughty and dirty yeah. and bad. Yeah. And I know you put it yeah. out and she was like, ew, but like you said it. <laughs> I said and it. It's Look real. at my YouTube history. It's all I want. <laughs> you said it and it's real. Yeah. And then you don't know like who might listen to this pod and be like, actually, and DM yeah, you about that's something. So true. You're putting it out yeah. there. And some people are like, don't, don't jinx it. Fuck that. But that's, I, because I, I, I always totally talk about everything I want to be doing with my life. And then yeah. I'm like, people are like, but if you say it too much, like it's going to not happen. I'm like, you know what? If I don't say it enough, then I'm never going to believe that it could happen. Totally. Like, if you keep it as like a dirty little secret, that means you don't actually believe in it. Yeah. That is so true. That's so and, true. And also, I didn't really believe, but I just like, I want to do video. Then someone overheard me say I want to do video and said, oh, Betches is looking for a video person with five years experience. Mind you, I just had like six months of little editing. So we lie? We did not lie. Oh. We, we I do. can't, I, I submitted a funny video. That was like how they were okay. getting up. I submitted yeah. a funny uh-huh. video and like, it was so fun and easy for me. I'm like, it's like making my friends laugh. Yeah. yeah. I sent it. They called me and they go, you have no experience. But that video was funny. And mm-hmm. I And I went in and I had like 20 other video ideas for them. And I just was like, but I see, can try this. I can do this. So that was my, yeah. I will like go to a job and instead of being like, this is why you should hire me. I go, this is what I'm literally going to Good. do for you. Yeah. These are my ideas right That's now. so smart. But this is what I'm passionate about. It's really what you're passionate about. You're going to be great at And it. they paid me $300 a week. And what? I was I was 26 at that point. Okay. Yeah. No, I was, I was 25 or turning 26. And like, definitely there were people who were like, mm, Hannah's not doing so well. Oh, yeah. No you're... job. 25. Working like whatever. In two years, I was on a TV show. It's so true. And you know what? I, I, how, like, did you ever think that that would happen? Like, did you ever think you'd be on a reality show, though? No. I never thought I'd do like reality Because that's, like, a totally TV. different ballgame. But, you know, I, again, I'm one of those people that's, like, fuck it, let's do it. Why not? Yeah. And, like, I had great experiences on it. Right. I also had bad experiences on right. it. But, like... It was all research for me. Yeah. And for me, I, I see myself as an entertainer, so I just had to keep putting myself in different places until I found, like, the right space yeah. for me. And, right. and it might change. Right. I'm also very open to, like, everything's moving. Yeah. Our brains no, are changing. Try everything. Everything. I go wake up tomorrow and be like, mm, I don't like stand-up and start, like, acting. Like, I don't yeah. fucking know. Why? No, it's you true. would be you a good know? actor. Um, you yeah, she's like, but that's actually, in the world. That's that's don't test me. Don't test no, me. You should Say do it. it. <laughs> but actually, that's how I got into your podcast because I'm a giggler, I will say. <gasps> you're a giggler? <laughs> Big time. I was kind of yeah. wondering how you guys know me because you're kind of like a little cool. We're not. No. Like you're cool. We're not, but not that, I mean, no, I have the coolest fans, but you guys are like cool. We cool. are, but we're really No, but not. Hannah, so you I, to No, show, you're goofy. You're really goofy. Like, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, unless I, you listen to this. So I watch here. you on Summer House and yeah. I watch you and Paige and your friendship was hysterical and I'm like, I need more of this injected into my veins. Aww. You have your podcast, Giggly Squad, and I'm not kidding you, you guys. You have to check it out. <laughs> I've never missed an episode. I think it's hysterical. <gasps> I swear up. to God, the banter you guys have is so, so good, and like that's how I'm. I'm trying to secretly like act like I don't know a lot about you, but like I know everything <laughs> about Are you. You're gonna make me I'm gonna talk about you guys next episode. <laughs> <laughs> the Giggly Squad originated again, like from. Shit happened where, like, I am now not on the reality show with my best friend. Yeah. And right. the best part of the reality show was us together, but they kind of stopped showing our, like, actual they funny did. friendship. Because yeah. what's more, like, people, they almost were like, oh, people love Hannah and Paige. Let's see the drama. And, oh, like, yeah. that wasn't, that's not it's where not I you. succeed. Yeah. yeah. I will, no. like, cry and just fuck it up. So, right. We started doing all these Instagram lives together. And then I was like, okay, no one can take it from us if we just do it together. Totally. Yeah. And it's the, my favorite time of the week, me just, busting my friend's balls, yeah. laughing at our own jokes too much. Yeah, right, right. And the amount of girls that have related to us, and I think it's also because we're not trying to be, we wanted it to be so raw and unedited because yeah. people see us through yeah. such like a, right. yeah, a yeah, screen yeah. that's right. so like dissected into like a weird narrative through other people's and lenses. Edited, like, weird. Totally. And, yeah. Like imagine your life being narrated by people who don't like you. Like that's exactly. just scary. Totally. scary. So we've just been ourselves and I feel like there's, it's important to have like a female friendship that's, like nuance. Yeah. That's not so yeah. simple. Totally. Yeah. And that's what I, I got from listening to your podcast that you saying it's unedited and it's raw. It's truly like that's how you know you guys are so authentic because you're just sitting on a couch with no production, like no lights, no no camera, like you're in your sweatpants, two microphones, yeah. and it just 
works and it's so yeah. relatable. And you guys went on tour, right? Like you did a few yeah, live so shows. Yeah, so we're going to do cool. more live shows. <gasps> Yay! What, oh we were God. in LA. I would have had you guys Wait, come. Oh we're going to be in New York though. We'll come back. Don't you I'll worry. Go we'll go to New York. Oh, okay. yeah, come to, yeah, you have to go to New York. I will come back. I have to. Oh my God, I'll totally. I'll see you but I'm coming for you. It's in September. Perfect, I'm coming. Yeah, say it's I'm for not him. Doing I'm going to say, oh, baby, I'm I miss like you. Shows. <laughs> I miss you. I just have to do something real quick. I'll just see like you for in one night. three You're days. Not gonna see me. <laughs> but also, a Paige is a great example. Like, Paige has taught me a lot about myself where she's someone who it's really easy with. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we've had our ups and downs, but, like, in terms of chemistry, that's yeah. just a type of person. Yeah. And I really think friendships and relationships, you have to treat them kind of similar where it's, like, you don't force it. Yeah. If you start feeling shitty around them, yeah. you either, like, try to fix it or you're yeah. out. Yeah. And... Back to Des, during, it was during quarantine that he moved from Ireland back to Long Island where his family has a house. Mm -hmm. For you or just in general? He didn't, he oh, didn't yeah, know. He didn't know, you. He didn't okay. even know oh, I was okay, there. Okay, okay. And we were like quarantining for months out there, not knowing we were there. Stop. And he just, I was like FaceTiming some football dude. I was having like, you know, summer house guys so, calling me all yeah, the time. Yeah. But you know when you were just like, we are spinning and it's going nowhere. It's going yeah, nowhere. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. like the attention, but like, but it's, this it's, it's, is going to end badly. It's gonna, like, yeah, you know yeah, it's going like, to end badly. <laughs> but you're sure. still picking up and you're like, hey, babe. Hey. And Des just goes, hey, are you out east? And I was like, yes. And just like that. And then he goes, do you want to get coffee in Sag Harbor? And I said, yes, here's my digits. And I, then I sat down. And people have stories like, oh, I talked to them for 10 hours. And that does happen a lot. Sometimes it's a dopamine hit. Sometimes you're just like high on it and then you lose it and then you go, like those are the hardest yeah. ones to yeah, get over. Yeah, I yeah. typically yeah. hate them did like the get... first four days and then I'm like, wait, I actually like you. Wait, did you I immediately really like them in the beginning Did you ever. immediately feel it when you met him? So I, because I've never been with an older dude, part of me was like, will I even be into it like that? Right, like will I I knew I was going to be interested in him because he's like a really successful comic. Yeah. So of course I was going to have fun. Yeah, yeah. The banter but was going to be off the charts. Literally, I got there and I was like complaining about my dad because he dropped me off early in the 90 degree heat because you had a tea time and I'm like dad this is the first date I've had in months you're yeah. sweating and, and I'm literally sure my groin is sweating because of you and you're always like oh do you want to meet someone I'm like this is your one time to support me mm -hmm. I was like in a bad mood and I and I sit down I'm like oh, fucking dad and he's like at least your parents are alive because oh. both his parents passed away and we Wait, just start I, I'm not laughing. no we start crying no, laughing. yeah that's just like and he, this is when he picked me up and in that moment I was like I'm Obsessed with you. Obsessed with you. Oh, so, you dark, creepy man. Dark. But see, I think that was a test for you because you could have been like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Again, I could have gotten in the car. Yeah. Someone could have been like, this bitch is annoying. And it's nothing against you. It's their yeah. lens they're viewing you through. Yeah. Right? Or he could have said the joke and I could have been like, that's, that's so dark, that's dark weird. and weird. Yeah. And I and that's probably happened to him and it's definitely happened to me probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, easily. But, but you guys have the same level of like... I do think humor is what... Connect. Like, is. he says, he's like, my love language is laughing. And I'm like, okay, well, can you get my more gifts? Like, what is that about? <laughs> but when in doubt, we find humor in each other. Yeah. Um, And that's important to me. And he does feel like home. Aww. Like, the good and the bad. Like, mm -hmm. things, some, I'm like, that, my dad's literally said that to me before. Or, But it, like, it's my, yeah. it's my comfort. That's right, what, right. And my he calls me say. out on my shit. Do you think that, that, did you, because since he always says this, you don't really know someone until you have your first fight. Did you feel like that with him too? Because like you probably had like this high of like always getting along, but did you ever have like a moment where you guys? Yeah, it depends like how you guys fight because if you can resolve it and understand yeah. each other, you guys fight that you're is, meant to be. That's a really good point. It's, yeah, I have a whole stand up bit about like the first date should be a fight and like <laughs> yeah. take him to the DMV, so like yeah, take him to Home Goods and like sniff all the candles what? and see if he gets upset. I uh, like say you want to oh, switch that's... meals with him oh, after yeah, you yeah, order yeah, a salad, yeah, yeah, like yeah. send the food back. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like you. I say like when you're. You're you're both hot, and you're both acting on your best behavior. Yeah. You can yeah. get along with anyone for six months. Fuck that Definitely. shit. Like Easily. we don't have time. Like yeah. you know when you they suddenly start showing sides to them, and I'm like, why didn't you show me that in the I, beginning? Yeah, you're like, like why am I saying six months in? And then you're Not like, good. well, I already put six months in, I guess. And he's tall, so I guess I'll stay. And he's tall. I say, I always say the amount of months he is above six feet is the amount of months I stay with Same. him. I After like discovering he's a monster, I'll be like, okay, you're six four. Four oh more months of this shit. The more interest you are, the less of a personality you need to have. It's fine. Oh, yeah. It's, no, true. it's true. It's true. The higher, closer you are to the sun. Yeah, the closer you are to the sun, you don't really need to. He's like, I have frosted tips. I don't really need to have them on But it. I was guilty of like, these would be so boring. And I'd be like, no, he's great. Yeah, you try to make them better in your head. Yeah, because yeah. I like the idea. I love the idea of stuff. Me but too. the thing with me and Des is, so we go on four dates and we're like into each other. And mm -hmm. he's like, 
freaked out. He bas- it's I basically have to go to Summer House, and it's not filming a normal season. We're, it's COVID, so oh, we're yeah, locked in a house yeah, for yeah. six I saw it. weeks. I don't know how mm-hmm. you guys did that. Oh, I had I was fully having mental breakdowns every day. At one point, I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, am I supposed to have this much diarrhea? Like, this isn't even normal. <laughs> Stress shit. Like, I literally yeah, lost so much no. weight, and I was, anyway, pure anxiety. And he was like, look, obviously, like, you're going to be with, like, a guy you're also talking to. Like, do what you have to do. I'm here after. And I was like, oh, mature. Wow. It's mature. Mature. Mature Wow. And then I get there, and it's like, shit immediately is hitting the fan. Mm-hmm. And I start calling him every night. Mm. And I would, like, <laughs> the joke was I would, like, call him. I'd be crying. And then oh. he would, like, calm me down and then, like, pump me up. And then I'd get angry. <laughs> and then we'd, like, have phone sex. And then we'd just talk about, like, get to know each other. So we'd yeah. have, like, full, like, five-hour podcasts every night together. Oh, oh wow. But think of, I was, I'm such the, like, I'm a chill girl. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be, like, yeah. in your apartment freezing because the AC is too cold. And I won't say a thing. I'll be, like, it's yeah. perfect in here. <laughs> <laughs> Where Des, like, I call and I'm, like. <gasps> this guy's so mean to me. <laughs> you feel like you could be so, but you're so open comfortable with him. immediately. Yeah. You're like, I can cry. I, I guess can. like, and he's like, we low key like we. I'm Italian, like I'm passionate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm either like I'm a passionate person. I'm not boring. No. So I was just giving him, but yeah. it was it was way heightened drama for like what it's actually like to date me. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like dating me while I'm filming yeah. a reality show. Every like I every day I had like four storylines. I Everyone had, to keep had a him up comment. With. They're like, his age. Where is he? Like, oh well. So he wasn't even supposed to come. Really? But he, like he didn't even tell his agent. Like it wasn't like a thing he should do for his career necessarily. Yeah. It's kind of risky. And he comes and he was like so nice to everyone. At one point he like ordered pizza and we all ate it in my room. And then they were like, stay stay with him and let people go on the boat. And I'm like, sure. So we stayed. We were like yeah, having dude. all this fun. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, he has to leave. He has to leave. He leaves. And like a guy comes up to me and was like, we don't know if we like him. And then someone was like, yeah, he didn't hang out with the group enough. He was there for two days. I'm like, oh, and I, I've been talking on the phone with this man for five weeks and he was so nice to everyone. So I'm sobbing. I'm like, I got to Because there's nothing worse when Literally all my friends look to me and they're like, worse. he should have hung out with us more. And I know it's like a storyline they're doing, but I know that they're going to edit it like he's not like he's an asshole. with people. Especially, yeah. oh my when God. When he's literally doing a like favor the for the show. Person. Well, you feel bad for him because you're like, he didn't sign up for well, this. That, exactly. Yeah. So I'm yeah. immediately panicking, being like, oh no, 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 no. And then he, but so our good our first like fight was when basically like I things started to air and I'm Mm -hmm. just like getting upset yeah and his whole thing was like stop watching the episodes stop reading the comments but it's like when things are going bad you want to see how bad yeah and so we would kind of fight on because he's wiser than me in the entertainment world mm-hmm. where he's he's never dealt with this level of social media right but he knows what it's like to be in the public eye yeah. and he was like i he's like i made the most money ever in my career when the most people hated me because just the most people knew who i was and yeah. they talked that much shit yeah. so he kind of was like you're in right now but i would like it would pop up on my tiktok someone yeah. being like why well, i think hannah burner is yeah, yeah and i'd be yeah, like yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, and, and he'd right. be like, "Stop looking at your phone," and I'd yeah. be like, "Okay, well, I just need you. I need to 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 be here for me." Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, but this is day four hundred of this," and I'm like, "But it's it's Tens- really hard because yeah. reality yeah. TV yeah. is a, a certain kind of toxic." No, it yeah. is. Where it they is. Tr- the whole re- reality TV yeah, is literally is. trying to get a reaction out of people. No, it Do is. you hate this person? Yeah, we're gonna make you hate this person. Yeah. they choose yeah. you to be the villain or not the villain. And yeah, not and like one you, you one season, you're the hero. Right. The next season, suddenly you're a villain. So is that why you left? You were like, "This is." Right? Too well, toxic. Well, my thing is, he also then he proposed, and you're like, wait, you, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Can we? I want to get also I into your bachelorette party and your oh, yeah. really wait, quick. Wait, wait. I know I, we're like keeping you hostage like right two, now. I'll like, stay here forever. I have like two <laughs> questions before that question. Yeah. So, um, well, actually, one's a comment. If you can survive a fight on reality TV, you can survive anything. So the fact that you guys stuck through then that is like amazing. A, it's true. I like, do have to say, it. If we were gonna bro- break up, that was one. Like, yeah. we never came close to it, but I remember just waking up and, like, that's why I say relationships aren't perfect. Like, relationships aren't perfect because your life isn't perfect. Yeah. And this man stayed with me through the probably the most traumatic career thing that's ever happened to me. And, Where, yeah. and my... And he still was there. My was in type of personality wow. is, like, you're going to like me because I'm successful. Yeah. And then the guy that I want to fall in me. love with <laughs> is literally looking at his phone being, like, people hate hey, me today. People think and I'm just like, <laughs> it's embarrassing. And, I, and it's yeah. embarrassing. You're ashamed. Yeah. And then you start getting insecure around him. You're like, 
does he... Does he think I'm worse? And like, I also go from a high of everyone thought I was, like, the, funniest the truth, person. the funny yeah. truth teller. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, kind of cocky going into it. Like, I could I could put myself out there. I could stand up for myself. Mm-hmm. And he's... I want this guy to fall in love with me. And, like, he's getting DMs about, like, how could you be with God. her? Oh, so, so I was hard. I was a wreck. Yeah. But I, and I was, like... Rightfully so. But it, I guess you still have to be, like, that was a part of me. And he stayed with me through that. Mm. Yeah. And it got to a point where it all happened also right after he proposed. Wait. Oh, wait. seriously? So how long were y'all <laughs> dating before he proposed? Great question. So we went on like a couple dates. I did summer house, but we were like talking every night. Like they tried to make it like, oh, Hannah had a boyfriend. She didn't tell people. No, I got to know this guy yeah. over the month. Yeah. Right? And then was like, come visit. And then when yeah. he visited, I was like, I'm like, I was even nervous. Like, what if I don't like how he smells? Like, I forgot what he kind of looks yeah, like. That's yeah, how you yeah, know you, you love someone. Yeah, like, yeah, like so I wasn't like, dating this man. Yeah. I just was obsessed with talking to him at night. Yeah. And then he came in and I was like, oh, I forgot you're tall and I'm going to climb yeah. you like a tree. Yeah. yeah. And it was nice. But right after Summer House, we get. I got back to, like, my parents, and he lives in West Hampton. And after, like, two weeks, he was like, so, like, just stay with me. And I In his house? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just, like, well, moving. But part of me, it wasn't like the movies where the guy's like, here's my key. Yeah, like, slide Move the in. key. He literally very casually was like, you should just, like, stay, stay here for me. me. But see, I would be like, I, what does that mean? Well, that, that's what, what I did. That I mean? couldn't tell if he was yeah. like, okay, well, you should, I guess, stay with me because oh, we don't want to yeah. go back and forth. Or was he, like, wanting it? And like, I was like, this I is a big decision. Like, do you box actually want or it? Or bring it overnight. Yeah. 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 Holy shit. So well, you just, like, moved in? So I basically, I was like, do I can't tell if you want me to or you're, like, trying to be nice. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, no, I want you to. And I was like... I got to this place. I said, get the dump- the dumpster. We're throwing your crap out. No, he had, like, a lot of crap. Oh, so you went in there. You changed I went in there. everything. I, I've never done this. The kind of, like, like you want, like, pillows. Like, I was, oh, I yeah, was yeah, nesting, yeah. they call it. I've never oh, nested before. Nested. <laughs> I literally I mean, like, get to this place, and I'm like, get the dump truck. We threw it all out. And then we had the most beautiful, like, four months of just, like, alone in West Hampton. We were, like, fostering dogs. It was, like, magical. Like, okay, so, like, yeah. And then he, so, Summer House filmed the whole um, fall. He proposed on Valentine's Day in February. Oh. And then the show starts airing the next month. Oh, shit. And shit hit the fucking <laughs> Okay. Band. What a so horrible the next six engagement. Months, <laughs> the next six months were, like, the worst six months of It's, like, of damage my life. control for what happened months ago. Well, well, yeah, because then it, and Ugh. also it airs. When, and I'm going to tell you, when it filmed, like, it was hard, but, like, everyone got along at the end. Yeah. I actually, yeah. like, had a, like, I was okay. The way it aired and what what things were shown was, like, worse. Was way, way worse yeah. in my situation where, like, you have to defend yourself against things that aren't, like, true. true. Against and, the person you love. And you don't know yeah. how to, if the more you speak, or then people are like, just don't say anything. Yeah, It'll yeah, pass. Because, exactly. yeah. like, it's not true. And then you start trying to speak up for yourself. And then you get yourself. So long story short, it was just drama. Drama. Drama, drama, drama. And we also, because we got engaged, I think that also made it, like, Summer House wasn't making sense. Where, like, when I was single, it was fun to be on right. the show. Yeah. But now you've- also, Des is sober. No one talks about it. He came oh, in the really? house. He's sober. And they were like, he didn't play beer pong with us. They're and like, I'm like, he he's, can't fucking I'll drink. give the guy a break. I'm like, he was hanging out in the kitchen. Like, it wasn't. I think he could have done anything. He could have made a buffet of food and they'd be like, you forgot potatoes. Like, <laughs> no, they would have found that's anything. That's what you guys, like, yeah. in reality TV with stuff. Or just situations in life. You think back. You're like, what could I have done differently? And there's obviously things you could have done differently. But sometimes, like, the outcome was going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Because I avoided so. even, like, worse things they were trying to do. And wow. it's still, it's still, didn't, it's too much. Well, it's this just shows you even much. after an engagement, everything and all the summer house shit, y'all still made it out and almost stronger and had the best themed wedding ever, Dude, which and I your still don't understand. Party was in Miami, and that's my dream wait, wait. bachelorette. Place. I think she knows. I was like, <laughs> I under, know. I was talking shit about it, like joking, like I'm gonna have a garage wedding. I'm gonna <laughs> no. have like people. I <laughs> your feel like envisioned the most hysterical. ratchet shit that I was gonna do, and then I feel like I underpromise, overdelivered. <laughs> wait, yeah, because uh, <laughs> people are like, wait, this is nice. No, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna like, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna give them the worst. 
description of a wedding. Yeah, you really walk under, like their no. expectations so are shit. That's, that's so literally what you have to like, do. Like on my yeah. foot, and then it was like, wait, as she fuck? described it's it, like, was literally like a small like garage wedding. And then she's like, no, I'm having a disco Tulum dolphin. <laughs> like I want one, like beach wedding, human sacrifice, <laughs> human sacrifice. Wedding. You know what happened? I discovered wedding TikTok, which like oh, you guys, oh, you, you're not gonna care about until you like start thinking so, about this yeah. stuff. But you start putting like wedding aesthetic, and you see these like shots of people in certain aesthetics, and you're like. Oh, I need and that. then you're like, what is me? What is me? What like, is you? Put in your yeah. sign. And then you're like, dolphins. So I was thinking, I was pulling <laughs> stuff. And literally, I decided I needed like on the beach, Brooklyn, Tulum, dolphin wedding. And yeah. we kind of nailed it. Yeah, no, you, you did. It was you did. actually I stalked your so wedding. It was cool. I mean, awesome. I have to, Amanda Savory was my wedding planner and she's like fucking incredible. Yeah, she killed it. But I, I trusted them. It. Like I, yeah. I gave them my your inspo. Yeah. I didn't even see the tablescape before I you didn't. went to the wedding. Okay. I just trusted no. them. Wow. That's a lot of trust. Cause girl, you gotta you there's certain things you can stress about. And on my wedding day, I was like, I'm I want to be calm. trying not to be bloated. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. And that's stress pretty much is all a thing. I want to worry about. And and they're gonna do better than me. Yeah. Like yeah, I told right, them what I right. want and I'm paying them because yeah. they're good at like executing. What they do. Vision. That's what they yeah. do. But I do have to say, I can tell you the rules to the best Miami bachelorette of my life. Please tell me because what this has been my dream. Yes. I'm going to give you guys the Because I'm going to plan she's for her. She's my maid of honor. And we always say, our little sister Scarlett's also going to be a maid of honor, but she's, but she's like not as important. No. <laughs> so Scarlett's going to give like the oddball recommendations. No, but she's like, going to, we're going to end up like with no shoes on it in a I think alley. my bachelorette party is going to be with her and my younger sister, the most insane thing in the world. Tell us the checklist. Okay. The Go checklist on. is, it's about energies. You got to get the right girls around you. Yes. You can't just invite people because, like, political and stuff. You have to be, like, who is going to bring the party? Who's going to be yeah. fun? But did that cause drama? Because I feel like trying to select who would go is, like, I picking only, who do you want to kick I low-key a drama with one family member because they, like, or apparently like, wanted to come. But I was, like— We're not close. She wasn't, like, in a—she's pregnant. <laughs> okay, forget it. You're out. You're out. And no, I like, no, didn't no, want. No. I think she wanted the invite, but like in my head, I was no, like, we don't, have time. Like, we don't <laughs> have time. We don't have time for this. I'm like, the, Paige was joking. She's like, they won't even let her in the club. No, they, they won't even let her in the club, in. and you have to feed the two people. The baby's underage. That's that's an extra. That's that's the plus two people. <laughs> like it would have no. been totally nice of me to invite her, but like I wasn't fucking around with that no. shit. I was like, we're blacking out. Yeah. And I also. I would have been worried about her the whole fucking time. And she would have been like, yeah, oh, so you guys all drunk. I'm a bad people pleaser. Yeah. yeah. Is the baby okay? <laughs> is the stripper on 11 <laughs> hitting the stomach on the baby? Like, literally, like, you can't. You can't. No. Break that bitch's water. SLS falling into the club. Like, no. No. <laughs> her water breaks. <laughs> she literally gets rejected at the club, and I'm like, bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no. Take your way home. Everyone slips on the water. imagine? Yeah. So, anyway. I had... I basically said I don't want to do bridesmaids, but then I, because I was like, I <laughs> think it's like very, this is an old reference, but like yeah. MySpace Top 8. Oh, with yeah. MySpace, totally. where you would it pick is, eight totally people is. and then you like drop people out. And I was like, I literally hate that. I didn't want any drama like that. But then I started putting my friends together and I was like, wait, these are nine perfect women. Yeah. Yeah. It just happens to work perfectly. Yeah. And they didn't all know each other, but I, and they oh, were I all main that. character energies, but I knew. Wow. Yeah. I, I just, it wasn't the kind of bad shirt where everyone was like, let's give a speech about how great right. Hannah was. It was like, what is Paige wearing? What is this person joking yeah. about? We all just made each other laugh so hard. I love, but that's what a bachelorette party no, is supposed yeah. to be. It was, like, yeah. You can have like the whole formal thing, but do that for like your engagement party but or your bridal shower. it's all about shower. the energy you invite and yes. bring. That's and a the huge energy also, my rule is bachelorettes that are like, feel like you're at camp where it's yeah. like, okay, 10 a.m. we're doing yoga. So, no, no, no. no, no I had no. no plans during the day. Just each night we had a dinner. And an outing. But during the day, I text Sleeping. people and be like, if go? you're sleeping, you're good, but I'm at the pool. And then we have, like, we drink all day at the Love. pool. The girls who want. The girls who don't, they don't. Sleep, yeah. And then around, like, 6, Paige was so, she got me a gift to get my makeup done every night because she didn't want oh. to look better than me every night. <laughs> like, she wanted <laughs> yeah. me to, like, at least, like, put an effort. So every but night, I would, oh, at 6 so o'clock, I'd be like, bye, bitches. And that's I was the only genius. one. Wait, I'd get my makeup that's done. perfect. So we... Themes are can be very corny, and mm. I don't. I also hate dressing up in themes because I'll like get drunk and be like, I don't feel like myself. Yeah. I don't feel cute anymore. You, yeah. you give a like aesthetic Ooh. that you let everyone do their own thing with. So I, I like was like, that. first night feathers. And you feathers. see what people do with it. Easy. Like, you know how feathers were in? Yeah. Like, yeah. when you, you get, get married, like there'll be things that are in. So, like, everyone had a different kind of feather look. I love that. That's really fun. And then we did, like, 
like space cowgirl, which like you could do whatever you want. Like, people yeah, looked crazy, yeah. whatever Fun. they. Oh, I love. It. I think people look like, like Hogwarts. Go in. I hate when everyone's like everyone's wearing this bathing suit. No, I no, mean, and then it's like the different bra. body types. Are you kidding me? Someone's like, tits hanging out. No, you can't even do the like, all one even, piece. And she's like, no, but bride. even bridesmaid dresses, you can't just give them one it's dress. Very cult like. It, it, it you gotta. Is. It's like not everyone's the same. Very some people have D's. Some people have A's. I'm a people pleaser, so I wanted everyone to have fun. But I got to calm at least. I basically get joy out of seeing other people have fun of me yeah like like when people at one point i swear to god everyone was talking to a new person no one was talking to me everyone's bored with me (laughs) and you're like i've done but i literally was watching and i started to get jealous i was like hey hey, not too close (laughs) remember i put you two together yeah you're my friend it made me so happy like i did not need to talk to anyone i was sitting there just like i'm so it was like a drama free (laughs) fun sense oh i wanted drama i was like one girl walked in with like an eggshell bathing suit. I said, "Bitch, that's white." That's I have one white. rule. Egg we have shell. one rule. <laughs> no and way. We were just we were just laughing. But the next key that you have to yeah. do, you have to invest in a photog for the weekend. So smart. Really. Think what. So smart. What mm. everyone wants to look cute for the photo, right? Yeah. yeah. Think of the time that it takes for the girls to take each other's photos. Be like, yeah, mm, "Can you yeah, take more? Yeah, I don't yeah. like this. Can you take mine?" Stress. Stress. We had basically a paparazzi with us at all times. The first dinner, wow, I every, about that. everyone gets ready. We're all sitting at dinner waiting for appetizers. I go, Sierra, it's your turn. She gets up, goes outside, does a full photo Holy shoot, shit. comes back. I go, okay, it's my turn. This is so genius. I didn't even think it's about that. so smart. I did not even think so about that. So we spend more time together, not taking photos. You have a professional photo. Everyone you want to look hot. Instagram everyone is wants to post And I have to say, at, at Miami. I wanted the content pop in. I but, wanted and to then everyone internet. has sort of the same aesthetic for the photos, and you're like, oh, that was from Hannah's batch. <laughs> like, everyone knows it was from your when they, These girls are still posting those photos to this yes. day. Like, it was amazing. So and smart. he gave so us, like, a whole gallery where you had the group photos. And then I'd be like, okay, you two take a photo with me. And and he was also very chill. This yeah. guy, a freak, Armando. He's amazing. Yeah. And he he like ate with us. He partied with us. Oh, sick. And he was just like really fun. Perfect. So first night, well, we stayed at the Good Time Hotel. Oh, that great new pool. One. Is it fun? The yes. Pharrell great pool. Small rooms. Okay. okay. But I like <laughs> we had three girls in one bed in one, and I was so, like, let's do it. Oh, but, you, wow. but some yeah. girls were like, I want my own room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Paige and Sierra got a huge room. Somehow, and like I did not, but like that's just that's how that's, our, our friendship. That's how it crumbled. I, I was right? like, actually, I'd rather them like be happy, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I like yeah. literally was sleeping in between Becca and Haley. <laughs> like Becca was like, <laughs> like holding us. Bachelor, Come in yeah. here. <laughs> but it did feel like a fun like. It's like a sleepover. Like it's like a long. Like, what was yeah, because when like, are you gonna do that? When you have a husband? No. What no. was your favorite club going to? Okay, the best club, by far, was. So first we went to Swan the first night just oh, to eat, God. which is a nice vibe. It's yeah. a really nice vibe. You feel yeah. like you're in like um, a, a jungle, a magic jungle. Yeah. And then, and coming from New York, we were like, right. yay. It's like like a nice yeah. coral tree cafe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then we go to Eleven. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. Where shit went down. Paige got like the best table for us where we told the security guards, we go, no, no men. No, no men. men are allowed. No. They were clotheslining people. Like, Stop. like we were just like, mm. that is and so like a guy would be like, hey, what's up? And he'd be like, <laughs> and we'd be like, fuck you guys. Yeah. Like, we were like, all the girls yeah. are welcome. I love that. This girl next to me was just like pouring vodka down my mouth. And I had a full, it's the first time out I've puked since like I'm 24. No way. Literally was like, mm, puke. And then I go to the bathroom, knees on the tile. Mm. Knees on the tile. Oh, oh, it's go. a full, full puke. The full sense. Full. And I wish more came out, but it was like afterwards you were like, I'm back. Go really back. Like, Kiss page on the lips. Rally. Um, Kiss rally. <laughs> then people started to leave. It was like 2.30. But I was like, I was just so high on like, it's really the perspective. Like yeah, I'm that yeah. person who's out partying and I overthink it. I'm like, this isn't fun. I shouldn't be here. I'm going to be tired yeah, tomorrow. I, I will look in the mirror and be like, why is everyone else having fun? Not me. I'm an, an anxious partier. Yeah. yeah I can, but because yeah. it was like a celebratory moment of all these people out here for like to be with you was like, I was so into it. Yeah, like a normal yeah. song would come on that I'd yeah. be like this and I'd be like, <laughs> like it was just like there was, everyone was on a high because everyone loves you and wants to celebrate oh, you. So it was just also, like, Also, oh. dude, I went through fucking some friend drama on TV. So to have like my real people around yeah, who are like publicly being you. like, we love her yeah. kind of meant the world to me because yeah. I had getting excluded from a friend group is like so painful. And then imagine it happening on, on a TV. On a TV show. And Everyone I'm like, knowing. wait, so I'm 29 and like so I'm you can a loser really, again? Yeah, you can exactly. like rewind. We like, watch. I have to start over. I'm like, back in high school. You know certain groups, like of course you're the loser group. You don't fit in with them. Right. Yeah. They're not your right, people. Right, 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 right. And... 
but you still feel like a fucking loser. So to mm-hmm. have my friends like with me and be like celebrate my life with me, yeah, it was amazing. But then this is what happened. Fucking Ja Rule comes out. Ja Rule? So, ja Rule. <laughs> Wait, I don't, what's like one Ja Rule? <laughs> no, like really. What would I be without my baby? Yeah, like, oh, put- am I in the middle of Always on time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ja Rule. So it's so funny because he was like, when I was 11, I'm 30, when I was 11, he was like the first time I watched MTV. He was like shirtless with a shanty. Like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm naughty. <laughs> so he goes on stage and start, he's loving it. He's rapping. And we're like from me to the camera to him. And we are screaming yeah. the lyrics back at him. Yeah. Me and Sierra are just like, go, go, go. Must have yeah. loved you guys. It was <laughs> at one point, I'm like, are him and Sierra dating? Yeah. And <laughs> we were like having so much fucking fun. Some of the girls literally missed it. Oh. Seriously? They, yeah, so then the next morning we wake up and then you spend all day just, you're dead. Yeah, you're, you're dead. dead, but yeah. you're at the pool yeah. dead, you're eating quesadillas dead. And then you rally. The next day, we, I did, I got a boat. The boats are fun in Miami and you gotta do them. You and gotta I, do I it. Basically got, right we got hooked up. Like some friend had like a mega yacht. And Oh, so it like kind of just worked out. But we out. joked. I was like, guys, it's like, it's kind of clinky. Like it's, it's, kind a of clinky. it's a little dingy. Yeah. It's kind of dingy. Like we really, and then they were like freaked Buff. out, like yeah. below deck that's, situation. Oh, below deck. I but love like, that. This is a problem. I think I would have actually had more fun on a smaller boat because it was so big that, that you're like, like where's everyone? Doing? That's like the best problem to have. It's almost yeah. You're like we big. all were sitting on the top and we were like, and all the other you know smaller boats are being like crazy, and then yeah. we were just like, can we have some more champagne? Well, I just have a question. <laughs> so did Des have a bachelor party? Oh my god. Okay. This and is. I have a question. So you have rules for him because I know a lot of my friends that are like getting married they're like no strippers no this or they're like I don't give a shit just don't talk about it so Dez is unique because he's a wise older man we love he I go do you want to have a bachelor party and he's like my whole life was a bachelor party up to this point he goes I'm just gonna close my eyes and remember things and I was like ew that's what he said he's like my bachelor party's sleeping now he's gotta do it come on so he like he basically (laughs) didn't have one and then he sees ours is like so lit yeah and then basically, like, the week before the wedding, yeah, he had jealous. all his Irish friends came. But, like, I was in the house with them, and they just got, they got to be boys. Like, they, they like, I don't know what boys do. But I was, like, kind of a part of it. I didn't want to, like, we played tennis. Oh, like, so you went to his bachelor I party. kind of was. It was, like, a bachelor week for him. And probably the night before, his brother was like, bro, we have to go to strip club. We haven't gone to strip yeah. club. And Des is like, honestly, I'm tired. I don't really want to go. Would so, you have cared if he had gone? No, not at all. But I do have to say... You giving your man, like, restrictions, like, okay, maybe yeah. temporarily you feel good, yeah. but, like, you're not... Guys are who they are. Yeah. I pers- There's just certain kind of guys that, like, obviously they like a strip club, but they don't love it. I think it's a red flag when a guy is like, into a strip club it. more than 20 times. 100%. Yeah. I think it's yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. weird. I think it's, like, a... It has to be an event A few times thing. for, like... It can't be Some like, dudes love strip clubs, and yeah, they're not, no, they're no, not no. my kind of guys. Yeah. And they're not attracted to me either. Right. Like, right. we're just not We don't have the people. facilities. We're not built that way. <laughs> yeah. There's, like, guys I've, fo- I've dated, they've never been ones to, like, follow a lot of Instagram models. Like, oh, that's, yeah. That's it's, and it's not like, oh, they're not dicks. It's just, that's a certain kind of dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've never, and those kind of guys, I think, are more into materialistic shit, so they're never that into me because I'm, like, kind of gross. <laughs> and you got to <laughs> go Jesus. forward with the grossness. <laughs> I'm attracting the right energies for me. So I think for your friends, like, what are you going to say? Don't go to... Like then he just it'll make him want to go. Want to go more, and then yeah. he's bitching to his friends like she won't let me go. Like, that is like, do you you totally literally go on like look at your phone. He's asking and be like yeah do whatever you want. Like literally don't give a fuck. And then they care and they're like fuck wait she doesn't care. She doesn't, doesn't care. almost want to do the right thing more just to make you happy. Or they also really think in turn like what do I actually want to do? Not to like yeah. be rebellious or because yeah. it's like when yeah. you like hold something too tight it wants to run. Yeah, it's like restricting a kid. Yeah. They're gonna do it's the opposite. True. It's exactly. true. Exactly. Yeah. It's true. Don't hold something so fucking tight. Yeah. Just hold it. Trust and it's one him. night. I mean, if you're already thinking that your husband or whatever is gonna cheat on you in the bachelor party, you shouldn't probably marry. Him. Also, like if your dude's gonna cheat on you, it's not gonna be a strip club. It's not gonna be a strip club. Like and if it all, was, that like, is tragic. Him paying a, a girl to dance on him. Yeah. That's just. Like, like, if you're already going stupid. into it without any trust for him, then there should be such an... Re- like, there needs to be a reevaluation with what's going on here. Exactly. You like, know, what's like, the real can't... trust issue going yeah. on? Because, like, 
if you're jealous of like a girl who yeah. probably hates him and is yeah. just trying to get paid that night. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> she's supposed to go home. She's <laughs> like, honestly, you're so annoying. <laughs> like, get off like, tell me one stripper that's genuinely really interesting. She's like happy to out. be there. She has to deal with all these guys every single week and mm-hmm. going there for the same reason. Mm-hmm. You think she's going to go focus on your guy? Like, <laughs> that one. <laughs> Also, <laughs> let's be honest. He's going to be so fucking drunk. I literally just tweeted, like, for a girl's bachelorette party to be fun, it has to have, like, loyalty, organization, like, your firstborn. Yeah. It has to be, like, so fucking all yeah. out. Where, like, Steve sees half, half a nipple, and he's like, that's the greatest weekend yeah, of my yeah. life. Like, let him have his half thing, a nipple. Thing, I know. Wait, tell me one time as a girl. Also, he's watching porn a guy, all the time. Wait, no, like, tell, I have a question. So your man is sloppy. He's drunk, of yeah. course. He's at his bachelor party. Tell me one time as a girl, you've looked at him like, that's hot. <laughs> He's gonna be blackout. That, he's blackout. That, that's mine. If your his back sweat and his pit stains, yeah, and him not even just getting eyes a fucking, rolling back, it, his poor his smell like beer. One, yep, that's yeah. my guy. He's, no, he's gonna take me away from no here. Punctuation. There's no separation between no words. No punctuation. That is there's no, so there's funny. There's no commas. There's just a fucking fluid oh sentence. My God, I mean, so come funny. on. Like, there's no way. This. I mean, unless like she's yeah. that. I don't know. She's like, they have like that connection. Yeah. Suddenly, like that's the man of her dreams. I am a missionary though for older men. So for girls listening, also I think dating's hard in your twenties because the guys are also figuring shit out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're figuring out what they want. They also don't know how their dick works. And like, there's just a lot. Like, oh, God, like these poor women, what we have to go through in our early twenties when like, because you don't know. You're like, oh, is that how it's supposed to feel? <laughs> Okay, okay. And then you're with an older man. You're like, hey. Oh, yeah. okay. this is the, that was the minor league. So <laughs> We're I, in the major. Yeah. I, I also, I there is something to be said, too, about emotional maturity. Yeah. I don't think girls yeah. are necessarily, like, smarter than men all the no, time. No, we, we, we mature faster. We, we definitely mature, mature faster. faster. So, like, you're talking to a squirrel, and you're wondering why the squirrel and you are not hitting it off. You're talking to a squirrel. <laughs> You know, that's what I'm calling guys in their 20s. Um, they have little nut brains. Little nut brains. <laughs> he can't even help me on what's happening. So, <laughs> I do think date older guys, raise your age range. My age range was like 34. What the fuck am I thinking? Because you're thinking like that traditional family when it's like yeah. date. Also, like, don't marry these guys. Just learn from them. Yeah. Like, yeah. And also, I like how they're confident in their careers because then they're less intimidated by you. Yeah. Totally. Which yeah. is why I fucking like it. Security is the sexiest thing. I yeah, cannot yeah. be with a guy who's insecure about his shit. Yeah. Because we're taking we're partners together. If you found yeah. a guy that's in his twenties and he's like mature as shit, you found a unicorn. Yeah, and that happens. And that my happens. brother's like that. He's yeah, super yeah. mature, no, but he all... came out of the womb like a grumpy old man. You know, <laughs> came out frowning. <laughs> yeah, I, he was like disgruntled. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's, oh, already over, he's already over the shit. Yeah, he was lunch. so over it. It's been two minutes. He's like, so. my brother's more mature than me. But I, I like to say it like you're going to like adopt a dog. You have the young dog who's like super cute, yeah. fun, yeah. but like untrained. 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 Yeah. yeah. And then you have the senior dog who has his flaws, but you know what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, he's yeah. pre-trained. Yeah. Like, you don't have to yell at him. He's not yeah. going to jump on your couch. Like, he, he like... Des has dated women that have, like, like he knows how to be a, a boyfriend. Right, 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 right. And, like, you could try to mold a dude, but, like, honestly, no, too much admin to have for me. Experience I'm not a before. project manager. Yeah. I will forget <laughs> to send the email. Yeah. And then I'm fucked. <laughs> and, like, you don't know what the puppy's going to become. Yeah. That's, oh, that's true. true. He could start liking crypto. Like, you don't want to <laughs> deal... <laughs> With him, uh, with that shit. These guys, they fucking like discover a new thing because their friend <laughs> sent them a link, <laughs> and then they lose Talk forty grand. Crypto. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> I'm gonna pee. I'm gonna pee. <laughs> I always pee when I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. We love you. This is it. We're yeah, friends. Like yeah, sweating. Man. You're not. <laughs> For diapers. Like, oh yeah, we only do like manscapes. Oh wait, you're like our sister. At this point, I'm like, okay, no, we all brought it. This like works. This is it. You're our sister. We're we kind of look similar. We are. We kind of do. Yeah. I mean, we're gorgeous. We we're are actually stunning. stunning. <laughs> we're stunning. And she's all Italian, of my thoughts are the same. She's Italian. Wait, us. Adopt me. Okay. Easy, easy. No, you have to adopt us. We're the puppies that need training. Yeah, yeah you are. Adopt. We really are. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe we could do next time in New York. We should do like a YouTube of like. Us, you guys and Giggly Squad, us like doing something fun together. This would be, I'd throw way. up. You know. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Like somewhere, in, maybe like we go to an Italian restaurant and <laughs> yes. talk shit. Oh, yes. Easy. Let's break Let's bread. Start, we're breaking we're bread. Let's start a mafia. Oh, yeah. 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 Like Soprano. Wait, we can yes. do a mafia and anybody can come. They have to be Italian, sorry. But like you can come in. We'll have like a little name. 
Yeah. We should dress Let's like just like old mafia gangster wives. And fur. Like, mm. fur. 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 With fur. like a beret Ooh, and a yeah. cigarette on one of those long sticks. Yeah. Right, we're doing it. Wait, everyone kind of looks the same in here. All right. You go <laughs> you're in the good. mafia with us. You're not you. You're, you're a not man. You, you're a man. <laughs> you're a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay. So before we wrap, tell everyone where they can find your social media, your podcast, your oh my God. comedy tickets. Hannahburner.com, B-E-R-N-E-R. I have my shows. I'm going to be in LA in August doing a stand-up show. Wait, what? what day? I don't know. In beginning and middle. Regardless, <laughs> I'll let you know. Yes. Okay. And well, I'm, going, I'm going to so Portland. I'm going to yeah, yeah. Um, Tacoma, Chicago, okay. Madison, Milwaukee. So anyway, if you guys have... I'll be in Milwaukee, fans, yes. Yes, yes hell yeah. I'll see you in Milwaukee. <laughs> see you there. And then you'll follow it. me on Instagram and TikTok and listen to Giggly Squad. And if you're into like mental health shit, mm-hmm. my podcast Burning in Hell is like a oh. comedy mental health Yes, pod. it's really good. Hannah, we're obsessed with you. Oh, thank you. Two types of girls. I I'm a giggler. I, she's the burning in I hell. I like mental, yeah. dark comedy. Like the maybe something you're slapping yourself everyone. and all the shit that you're going If you're through. emotionally ill, listen to Burning in Hell. <laughs> so you see the difference between us. <laughs> I love it. Hannah, I, I, I loved you before yeah. and now I'm obsessed, obsessed with you. Oh my God. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It was coming. an honor and a privilege. It was oh so much God. fun. We'll see you soon and we will see you Tuesday. guys next Tuesday. Tuesday. Bye. Bye.